Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are back with another video for CSS course for beginners. In today's video, let us see about the background properties of the CSS. These background properties are really very useful in creating or in formatting the background for your particular web pages or your dynamic pages. So let us see the first one. Here you have first the background color. The background color can be in keywords, it can be in hexadecimal color code or shorthand hexadecimal color code or RGBA value or only RGBA it can be percentage or the normal values. You can add for anything. The next one you have is background image. For this background image you have, you can use the online image it can have the online image or you can also have the offline image. Okay, next one is background position. Background position property sets the starting position of your background image. And by default, the background image is placed at the top left corner of an element and repeated both vertically and horizontally. This is by default it is. Next one is a background attachment. Background attachment property set whether the background image should scroll with the rest of the page or it should be fixed with it. And the default value it is going to scroll with the content that you have used. The next one is a background repeat. Whether you want to repeat your background in the x-axis, in the y-axis, so you can just repeat it. You can use this background property for your web pages to have the background, for your paragraphs, for your tables and etc. Let us see these particular formatting properties in the Visual Studio. This is the Visual Studio and here we have our HTML and this is our preview tab. HTML5 and here I'm just going to write as a background formatting. Now inside this background formatting, I'm just going to use inline style sheet here that should be there inside the body i'm just going to use h1 formatting now in the style sheet i'm going to add the background properties one by one the first background property i'm going to add it for complete body let me show you the colors so these are the keywords and the colors that are there you can give the complete background with the help of the keyword or you can also use hexadecimal color code let us use a hexadecimal color code so this is your hexadecimal color codes. These are here and this is the color code that I have here. I'll just copy this color code from here, go to my page and add a hash with that hash, particular hash, add this particular value that you want. If I'm going to change the intensities, as you can see here, it is just going to change the color, whatever we want. These are hexadecimal color codes. For example, now whatever I had told you, A, A, B, B, and C, C. So this is the background color that you are going to get. And I'm going to replace it with only A, B, C. So it is going to give me the same color that I want. So this is a shorthand hexadecimal code. Next you have is RGBA, RGB. You can see here red, green, and blue. You can also give the keywords here, or you can also specify which color do you want. I, I have used 255 for red. 0 for green and 0 for green. See that I have a red background. If I'm going to give certain one for my blue, it's going to mix red and blue together and it is giving you certain pink in color. And if I'm going to add a color extra here, so this is getting a bit light, lighter in shade. If I'm going to add 140 then this is the color that you're going to get if you're going to use rgba value if i just add an a here and i'll be taking a pink itself for now and here i'll just give it as 0 0.8 you can see it is a bit lighter if i give 0 0.2 you can see it the variation of the color will be there so this is how you can vary the same color with a different different intensities so this is RGB. In the same way, you have a percentage, RGBA with percentage, but the percentage is going to vary from 0 to 100. Whereas the values are going to vary from 0 to 255. So these are the six types of colors that you can add. The next you have is a background image. You can see here, for this background image, first you have the property none. So whenever you're adding a background image, you need to add the URL and inside this URL, all you have to do is use the double quotes and you can add the particular name if it is in the same file. 
If it is in a, if you are taking it from online, for example, now if I'm going to take it from Pixabay, Pixabay is a one of websites which can, which is going to give you full clarity images. Okay, I'll copy this image of this hummingbird. You need to copy the image address and then go back to your page and paste your image address over here. So once you're going to copy it, this is how the background is going to look like. Now let us see this completely in our live server. This is how it is going to reflect. Now you can see that there are four images that are there. To avoid these four images for your page, all you need to do is you have a property called as a background repeat property. You just have to give it as a no repeat. You can also make it repeat in the X axis only. You can also make it repeat in the Y axis only, but you don't want to repeat it. So you have here background repeat. You can see repeat, no repeat, X axis repeat and Y axis repeat. So these are the things I'll just give as a no repeat. So once when I'm going to give a no repeat, you can now see there is only one particular image here. Now, how to make it completely to the screen, how to make it, how it should cover the complete screen. For that, you have another property that is called as background size. You have background size. Now, this background size can be given as auto, contain, cover, and any of the measurements can be used. You can use a percentage, you can use pixels, you can use pickers, you can use EM, you can use REM, any of that can be used. So now I'm going to care. I'll just show you with a hundred percent. So this is the hundred percent of that particular image that we have. So this is hundred percent that it is going to reflect us. Now that is hundred percent it is going to cover the screen. You have one more option that is called as a cover option. Whenever you are going to give a cover, it is just going to cover the complete screen with that particular background image. So this is another property next you have the position as well so once if i see here if i'm going to give background is equals to 50 percent and now the image size will be reduced that is it is going to adapt to 50 percent of that particular background if you want this image in the center so for that you have background position so you can make use of the position like background position for this 50 percent from the left side it is going up now i'm going to give another minus a 50 percent now you can see that it is it has come down here now if you see here now you can see that it is displayed 50 percent from the top and 50 percent from the left what i'm going to do is i'm just going to make this as 35 percent let us see this Okay, now it has come somewhat in the middle. If I am going to use it just as a 30%, you need to make the adjustments like this. It is trial and error that you need to do until you are going to get perfect. So this is how you can add the picture in the middle of your particular page with the help of background properties. Next, you have a background attachments. You have a fixed, local and scroll. Scroll, it is going to scroll with your particular information fixed. It will be fixed at that particular position. Let me give a scroll here and for your, now let us see about the background attachment. For that, I'm just going to make it as a cover and I'll just comment this so that it is covered completely for my screen here. I'm going to give a background attachment scroll and I'll add here multiple paragraphs to it. Now with the paragraphs, you can see it is just going to scroll itself. You see this? It is going to scroll like this. If I add some more paragraphs to it, it is going to make the background position bigger and it is going to make it sure that it is going to get scrolled as the content is getting scrolled in your particular page. In the same way, next you have a fixed background position which is not going to move in spite of n number of paragraphs or n number of content is there in your page. So let us make this as a fixed, save, go to your page, refresh it. Even if you are going to scroll it, the image that is there in the background, that will be fixed. So this is how you can use your background properties in order to design your particular page or to design your dynamic web page. This is all for today's video. Meet you again with some more contents of CSS in the next video. Till then, stay tuned and keep learning. Bye-bye.